Folks, this is the Eric Metaxas Show. As you know, I have very interesting guests on the show. For example, today I have Amanda Grace on the program. Amanda Grace, there's no way to describe you, so <laughs> I'm going to try, but I just want my audience to know up front, we're friends, I yeah. like you, I got to meet you and your wonderful husband, Chris, in Bethel, Connecticut on Mother's Day. It was so great to meet you. Welcome back. Thank you so much. I, I, I like you and your lovely wife, too, and it was just wonderful to be able to come out and listen to you speak. You are hilarious, by the way. He gives <laughs> one great sermon, let me tell you. <laughs> well, it was, I was... to. I, it, I was, you know, I was in my, on my home turf in a way that I never am. I mean, this is like a mile from my parents' house. Yes. And uh, it was just it was just fun to have you there. My friend Jay Etzel showed up. I mean, it was great. My mother and father were, were wondering, what what is this? You know, they're kind of wondering, what, is, what kind of a church is this? It really was just a wonderful experience. It was his vineyard church in Bethel, Connecticut. Yes, it was. But I want to talk to you about so much. Let's Let's just start... For people who don't know, let's let's go to the beginning. We've got to explain. There are people who don't understand what this is going on. What? Yes, that's the prayer shawl. <laughs> yeah. Who don't understand what the prophetic is, and I don't think we need to make it more complicated than it is. Y you uh, simply say that God speaks to you. You're not alone in this. There are many people mm -hmm. to whom the Lord has spoken in the past and speaks. Yes. Uh, in the present the problem with prophecy a lot of people are very skeptical and they get very confused because there's so many different kinds of christians out there and there are many people for whom this is just utterly unknown uh it's kind of spooky and strange and so they just bat it away what do you say to somebody who says i think you're making it up what do, what do you say i mean i don't know if you're even around people that are that skeptical anymore most people that you're with they already know you're not making this up. But what do you say to somebody who just doesn't understand at all what is happening? I would say to them that, you know, first of all, that they have to really get a good foundation on what prophecy is to understand it, first of all. Because if you don't have a foundation and you're trying to understand something, it would be like me trying to understand quantum physics without actually researching about quantum physics and what it is now yes prophecy is simply hearing from the lord events and details that have not happened yet that will happen but here's the kicker to glorify to bring glory back to the lord so that's the biggest part of prophecy is you're speaking it as the messenger and the author gets the glory of it and i would tell them you really need to go and listen listen or listen to one of the prophecy fulfilled update episodes we do there are details i cannot make up like what we're going to get into today there are things that the lord shows me like seven months prior a year prior and all of a sudden it's news headlines so well those I'm are not, things i can't make up i'll play i'll play the role of the skeptic slightly mm -hmm. because i want to i always want to anticipate my audience's questions because there are yes. a lot of people that i mean i have to say that they're probably you know, they get they get confused. And I just want to break it down and say, listen, folks, I, Eric Metaxas, I'm not a, a prophet that I know of, but I have over the course of 30 years walking with God, I've had visions and dreams that have come to pass, that have actually been uh, things that there was no way I could have known. And then whether it's two days later or two years later, something happened it's just mind-blowing miracle so i've not really written much about this but i've experienced it and i have many dear friends that have experienced it um so i know we're not making it up so let's we'll we'll, we'll put this all to the side this kind of meta conversation and let's just talk about what you've been going through lately you said you had a dream uh about an american airlines flight and a missile Yes. Let, let's let's talk about that. Tell us about that. When was the dream? Okay, so the dream came. So we got back. So let's I have to think when the, the conference in Tulsa was, because I think we got back on the 20th. So the dream came a few days later, maybe around the 23rd. Okay, of April. Yes. So what happened is now this is funny because my flesh was completely out of the way, which that's what you want. 
because I was running 102 fever. <laughs> so my flesh was down, crucified, out of this equation. Okay, for people who aren't tracking, the term flesh means me as opposed yes. to God, right? In other words, you yes. want to know, it's like an me. algebra thing. You got to solve for X. Yes. How do you get X? <laughs> you get everything else away so you can see yes. X. So if you're looking exactly. for God, you got to get rid of everything else. And you've got to know it wasn't something I ate. It wasn't wish fulfillment. It wasn't me fantasizing. No, this was God speaking. So you had a horrible uh, fever when this yes. was happening. So, yeah, people could say yes. it was a fever dream, but go ahead. This couldn't have been a fever dream uh, it, because things are very clear when you're taken up in the realm of the spirit, almost like you're, you're in reality. You're just in this reality of the spirit. So the Lord knew he wasn't going to, I was going to fall over if I tried to sit up and hear from him at that moment. So it's like, I'm not even kidding you. He walked behind me and just went on the head and knocked me completely out. I don't even remember going to sleep. And I just, I kind of just went out. Uh, it was, it was, I must've been like midnight. Yes, it was around midnight. So what happens is next thing I know, I am standing on like a launch site in an undisclosed location. And my big brother, Dave Scarlett from His Glory Ministries is facing me. And he's in his typical gray, His Glory sweats and his army cap. You know, he's got the same clothes on he's always in. And we're facing each other. The sky was unusually blue. That I remember. To my right, was a very large head of hedge of trees, but this is what these trees look like. They went halfway up was the trunk, and they were reddish brown. And then the rest of the way, it was these dark, really super dark green leaves, a hedge of them to my right. All of a sudden, barely clearing the trees, this American Airlines Boeing 747 commercial passenger jet, like the big ones is just beginning to take off. So obviously, wherever we were with this undisclosed launch site, we were near an airport. So this plane just begins to take off. And I, I see as clear as day, it's like the Lord gave me 2020 supervision because I could see everything clearly. It is American Airlines. It says American Airlines on it, same plane, same color, same everything. And as it's beginning its ascent, in front of me and Dave hovering appears this like 30 foot tall, dark green missile. What do you mean hovering? Missiles don't hover. Do they, they don't. This is the interesting part. It's hovering. So it's waiting. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's like it was waiting for this plane because you're right. Missiles take off like rockets. Because they, they are. Hover. Exactly. <laughs> they're, you know, they're basically, you know, destructive rockets. You yeah. Know? Um, so what happens is this missile has no distinct markings. It, do, it's, it, does, it doesn't look like a U.S. missile, I'll tell you that much. It doesn't have the markings of any specific country on it. And when this plane is taking off, this missile begins to methodically move in a 90-degree angle right for this plane. And before I could see what happened, the Lord broke basically brought me out of it and I shot up on the couch. So you were sick on the couch, mm -hmm. you go out and you have this dream. And again, I want to say yeah. this because I, I want people who aren't familiar with this. This was not a normal dream. This has not a different normal. quality uh, mm -hmm. for you. You don't have dreams like this all the time. I mean, you have normal dreams and then you have, this is a prophetic dream. You could yeah. tell. How, how is it different for you? A, it's very clear. So in a prophetic dream from the Lord, you remember every little detail of that dream. The Lord ensures you remember every little detail of that dream. Very clear. You know, it's like you've got really good set of glasses on and everything is just very, very like yours. Like mine. <laughs> All right, really listen, clear. we're going, we're going to a break folks. I'm talking to Amanda Grace. Um, this is going to get very interesting. I promise. Uh, I just happen to know, not prophetically, but I did my homework. We'll be right back. Folks, I'm talking to Amanda Grace um, about some, we call it prophetic stuff, things that uh, are, are patently supernatural. We're not making this up. So 
Amanda, you had a dream. You mm -hmm. said it was extremely vivid. You knew it was from God. This was not just, you know, yes. uh, your brain spinning stuff. And in the dream, you mentioned a missile. When when I met you in Bethel with uh, our spouses, we were just talking. You said it was green. Is that right? Like a dark green color. Yeah. Because when you say green, I immediately thought Islam, because there's no such thing as a green well, missile. Why would a missile be green? But that's the color of uh, it's it's it. it Typically, it's the Islamic color. Mm -hmm. uh, so I interpreted it that this was a, a, a missile launched by some uh, either Iran or some some hostile Islamic figure. So when you saw this, um, how did you take it? Is this a dream where you think that this is there's going to be an attack on an American Airlines flight or was the American Airlines uh, a metaphor for America? How did you take it? Well, I took it two ways, okay? So the first way I took it is they're planning another 9-11 because American Airlines and United were the airlines involved in that. And it was, I think, Flight 77 and Flight 11 uh, that was involved. And so and I think it was American Airlines Flight 11 and 77, and then United was 93, if I'm not mistaken. And so I took it as they're planning another 9-11, they're desperate and they want to, because it's the same airline, you know, I'm looking at the same airline. But who's, that, who's they, when we say 9-11, we're talking about, the deep you know, there are a lot of nefarious, uh, radical uh, Islamic groups out there. So who who is this? Do we know? I would say there there is a deep state intertwined with an Islamic group that uh, has been planning this as a, let's say, plan B if things get too hot under the collar with what we see happening now in certain states over certain elections, we'll say. Okay, now we're getting into mm -hmm. deep, wacky territory. Mm -hmm. I, that's why I live, but just <laughs> people are listening and thinking, what is she that's talking about? Different. Intertwined with an Islam, deep state intertwined mm -hmm. with Islam. So you're saying that, that there are figures in our government that are working with the most hostile actors yes. out there uh absolutely yes and i th this is there was a lot that came from the stream it looks simple on the surface and it wasn't so they're planning this okay another 9 11. american airlines somehow is complicit in this somehow some way they're going to come out as being complicit in some sort of uh, nefarious dealings, we'll say. And then the other. Now, why, why do you say that, Amanda? Why, why, I'm, not, I'm not really clear. No, there's one thing if somebody says that there are um, radical uh, uh, Islamic groups planning to attack America, whatever. Okay, I get that. Uh, let's put the deep state part aside. Why would American Airlines be involved? And what was it about your dream that would make you leap to that? Because that's new to me. What made me make a connection there was the Lord had told me about a month and a half ago, two months ago, about an airline being complicit and covered basically in scandal. And so when I had this dream and then I took myself back to 9-11, because people have a lot of questions about 9-11 yeah. and what really happened uh, and whether there were other complicit parties. So when I kind of went and connected all those dots, I said, okay, somehow American Airlines is embroiled in something they shouldn't be, okay? So that's just a side note, though, from that dream. That's not the main, you know what I mean? Right, that's right, like, right. something sure. going on there, but that's just a side note. Um, from this dream also, I got two other things. A, there are truths about 9-11 that are going to come out. So that's going to happen. And then the other part was what you were talking about, okay, was that this is a representation of America. The people in America are rising up. There's a lot coming out in the open. The people are getting restless, okay? So if we take that plane as America, and it's beginning to make its ascent, right? Because I call Arizona ground zero right now. That's what I call it because there's a lot of digging, we'll say, going on. So it, it's starting to make its ascent almost, you know what I mean? Like there's there's questions and there's things happening and there appears that missile. So you're, you're saying that 
you believe that uh, things are happening, meaning that we will get to the bottom of what happened in this election, and it's beginning to happen, There's and you're saying that the people who don't want that to happen are going to do something. To They're try. outright panicked. They're outright panicked right now about this. And so this was, I think, was a, we'll call it a contingency plan to try to knock America back down just as it's beginning its climb. And the reason why the missile was so methodical, because it's, I think there's, there's more than one aspect to this missile of what is being planned. So that's why we, I didn't in the dream see, you know, it take off like a rocket. This is a very methodical timing, timing. That's, that's a word you want to remember. It's very methodical timing to this plot. And that's probably why we're seeing the missile move in that manner. So you're, I, I can't remember certain things. Ha, have you said flat out that you believe that, that God has said to you that what happened in this election will definitely be uncovered? And is there a timeline with, with that? He, he did say it would be exposed. Uh, there, you know, there would be more be exposed now than any other time. I mean, this is just an incredible amount of exposure that is happening. The Lord did say, I remember by this time next year, now this was during Passover, so this was April. See, there goes Grace the Dove. You see, she sings at the most amazing, incredible times. The Dove is anointed, I'm telling you. So by this time next year, things were going to look very different is what he said. Now, I can tell you what he said leading into the election that had clues that this was going to happen. Last April, so April 2020, yeah, I prophesied uh, from the Lord, like the Spirit of the Lord hit me and I just was off and running, which does happen. And he said, you are about to see a baffling set of events leading up to this election, and this election will be more baffling than the last. That was okay. So the Lord was warning. I And then in October, the October 6 word that I talked about partially last night, there was another part to that word. And he said, you are about to enter turbulence. I mean, when the Lord is telling you you're about to enter turbulence, you know what I mean? You're going to have a, you're going to enter a pocket of bumpiness. And he said, you know, but I'm still driving. And he used a play on words. He said the plan. That's what he said. So the plane, I'm still driving the plan. And that this was a pocket of turbulence America was entering. Now, you come out of pockets. Pockets of turbulence, you know what I mean? Can yeah. last on a plane, you know what I mean? Ten well, minutes, five that's minutes. That's good. That's good. Yeah. No, that's very interesting that you're, you're, you're following the logic. That's right. In other words, if you're entering a pocket of turbulence, it's not, you're not going into the, into the drink. You're not being destroyed. You're just going through turbulence and you'll come out of it. But, but you'll it, feel the shaking. Right. Until, and we you know. did. I mean, let's face it, that the period from, from the election until today has been tremendous turbulence. I cannot, I mean, I cannot. I know that yeah. nothing like this has happened in the United States in our lifetimes, for sure. This yeah. is the most strange thing. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to have a president whom scores of millions of Americans don't believe he was actually elected president, whether he was or wasn't, I don't believe he was. But the point is, even if he was, the fact that you have scores of millions of Americans that doubt it, yeah. that is totally unprecedented. It is. Uh, we are living in a very, very strange time. There's no doubt about it. But you see hope. Yes, I do see hope because this is a covenant nation. You know, the Lord raised the United States up to be a covenant nation and a, a brother and defender of israel which right now the leaders that are not coming to israel's defense if you want to and i'm going to say it in a very italian way right now there is no quicker way to piss off god than to back off when israel is being attacked and say we're not going to come to their defense and do it purposely because you're trying to accomplish something nefarious over there so you're saying that the Biden administration, quote unquote, is not backing Israel because they're trying to work behind the scenes with Iran. Mm hmm. Exactly. And I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. The Lord says this is not up for negotiation. This is not something that the Lord will negotiate on. And many leaders have made this mistake. And 
they've gone tumbling down the hill afterwards. I mean, they've made the mistake and then all of a sudden you see all these things happen with them because they've gotten God's attention and not in a good way. This is, uh, folks, I told you it would get wacky, but <laughs> sometimes reality is wacky. So that's the question. Is it reality or just wacky? I think it's reality. But uh, listen, we'll be asking more questions. Amanda Grace will be right back with you. Don't go away. Folks, I'm talking to Amanda Grace. If you're not interested in this conversation, you're not paying attention. This is amazing stuff, Amanda. I think you're right on everything you say. The question is always about interpretation, right? Like God says things. You could get a, a picture, you can get an image, you get a word, something. And then the question is, do you interpret it correctly uh, or do you go off? Sometimes people go off. I've had that happen to me where somebody in the prophetic will say something and it's flat out wrong. They didn't need to say the timing, but they said it. And then you just say that was wrong. How is it possible? I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. How do you not get in your own way? Because, you know, you think thoughts, but you don't want your thoughts to mess with what God is saying. Yes, and that takes a lot of time of God training you. I mean, I kind of got my butt kicked for 20 years before I, the Lord raised me up into this because he trains you during that time, and he's doing it to prepare you. He's not doing it because, you know, he hates you. And so over time, the Lord has trained me to, A, get my brain out of the way. So especially when the anointing of God just completely hits me, my brain shuts down. It's like he puts a, uh, what do you call it, um, gone out to lunch sign, and he turns it on my brain, and my brain is now out of it. I've also learned when I hear it, write it down and ask questions later. Do not get in your own way at the moment. Just write it down the way you hear it, because there's a reason the Lord is saying it that way. And then later on, I'll either go into prayer or he'll tell me to go look something up. Uh, you know, to give me a little more clarity on what he has said. So that's that's a thing you learn. That's a discipline you learn over time. You get a lot of uh, what I find fascinating. And to me, again, it's like it's always solving for X because you want to know, is this it real? Is. is this true? Mm -hmm. And when you hear somebody uh, say something and then uh, they don't even know what it was, right? In other words, you get a word like the word schism. You weren't really familiar with the word schism. No, In I fact, initially you were pronouncing it incorrectly because yep. <laughs> it was really, so god gave you the word yeah and then you kind of you you look it up that to me is one way that we could know it's not me right it's a foreign entry into my brain because i'm not familiar with that you you'll get uh you'll get different words and strange things you mentioned um this gets really crazy but you were talking about uh the the Kentucky Derby winner. I don't know if we should go there yet. Uh, where do you, you want to, you want to get up into However that? you want to go. I mean, we could work up to it. We could go clash to the Titans first and then go there because it's all connected. Well, okay. So let's, let's say you got a word from God over a year ago uh, saying that there's going to be a clash of the Titans. Now that's a kind of common phrase because Fox News mentioned it. It doesn't make me go, aha, but at the same time, it's interesting enough that clash of the titans in both parties what what did you what did you mean by that when did you get that word okay. from god and I'm when did you up. explain that to my okay audience? so this was october 6 2020 so this is over seven months ago and this i'm going to read to you exactly what the lord said okay because this was very specific and this is what the headlines are showing so he said there shall be a clash of the titans in washington dc the likes of which has never been seen Historic, says the Lord of hosts this day. However, in clashes, there shall come forth casualties, and there shall be those exposed in both parties who have been liaisons for wicked interests of foreign entities, says the Lord of hosts this day, both parties, capital. And then he says, a core shall arise and come forth, a core that fights and stands for truth. My capital word of truth, says the Lord, and my truth shall go forth in the midst and expose a chain gang of players all working together to overthrow not only the foundation of the United States of America, but capitals, all sense of morality and faith in God. So that's the way. Now, I'll tell you, a Bronx Italian doesn't talk like that. You see what I'm saying? Like, God doesn't sound like a Bronx Italian. I don't sound like God. He's got a very different sentence structure than I do, and you can hear it. Yeah. Well, that's what's so interesting is that there are people who, when you hear them prophesy, it sounds like them. Yes. Uh, other times you hear it. I mean, for me, anytime I have 
heard from God or whatever, it's very important to me to know it wasn't me because God forbid that we should ever say God said something and he didn't say it. I think we have to really, you know, if God is holy, we have to take that very seriously. And so I appreciate people's skepticism. I think people can go too far and just be skeptical of the whole concept, but we have to be really clear. Did God really say that? Because if he did, that's a big deal. We don't want to put words in God's mouth. That's blasphemy. But you, um, you got this word in October of last year. Yes. Um, talking about, it sounds like, uh, corruption in both parties. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit. Yes, so the Lord was saying that both parties were, people from both parties were going to be exposed to this, and the key word is liaisons for wicked interests of foreign entities. So it was going to come out, he was showing right there, that there was foreign um, infiltration, we'll say, with the election from more than one country, okay? Well, and now some... this is not like Russia, Russia, Russia. No, yeah. this is like a real, you know, coup. So okay. Mike Lindell has come out with all of this stuff, but the mainstream media and a lot of the conservative media, most of it, is still assiduously ignoring all of it. They don't talk about it. Do you think that this will ever break uh, into the mainstream on, on any level? I think the mainstream media is going to see a crisis, the likes of which they have never seen uh, because of their uh, ignore going like Rome is burning behind us. Nothing to see here. Nope. Nothing's burning to the ground. That's what they're doing right now. And my shock was not only Fox News carried the headline a few days ago, Clash of the Titans with Washington. So did CNN. So more than one news outlet now. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to a break, folks. Don't go away. Why would you? Uh, Amanda, this is, I know many people listening just think, what are they talking about? But I want to say to my audience, if you didn't see my first interview with Amanda Grace, go on YouTube. It's really important, I think, for you to understand who I'm talking to so that people understand, Amanda, who you are. Because they need your background to understand you're a sober-minded individual. Yes. You've suffered. You've gone through all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, your husband has suffered. Mm -hmm. It's important for people to get the pedigree of the prophet, I think, so that they understand who is this person. This is just, you know, somebody sounding off. N no. Um, you, uh, you talked about a bunch of things in your last video that was just posted yesterday. I just stumbled on it. And um, you talked about threats against Ted Cruz's mm -hmm. life. What yeah. did you hear? Like, what, you, are you praying and you see a picture of Ted Cruz? What was it that made you say that? So what happened was the Lord took me to the back of our property by the stream, quiet waters, Psalm 23, <laughs> familiar. So he takes me to get me away from everything. Uh, and he does that many times. He has to tell me some heavy things and he wants me to focus. So I'm down there, and, and that's what I hear, that they, that they are going to try to harm Ted Cruz. Like, Who's there? Who's they? Like, Who's that? The, you know, we'll, we'll say the opposition, uh, those that uh, see him um, as uh, standing in the way, speaking too much truth. You know what I mean? Opposing. So that they're going to try to harm him. Very interesting. Yes. Uh, you, are and you saying they won't? Him. They won't succeed or we don't, you don't know? Well, the way the Lord wrote it, he said they're going to try. And normally that means it's not going to succeed, but there's going to be an attempt. Well, we should pray for Ted Cruz. Yes. There are yes. only a handful of people in our government who are speaking the truth right now. Just a tiny handful. Uh, you've got uh, Tom Cotton, Jim Jordan, Ted Cruz, just a handful uh, of, of uh, Rand Paul just a few people that are really being bold and clear. Uh, what's the name of this woman? Bo Bobert? I can't think of her name, uh, the new uh, congresswoman. Uh, but anyway, there's a few people that are speaking really clearly and saying what is going on. And it's horrifying to me that there aren't more, but, that's but there the aren't. Ted that's Cruz the core the Lord spoke of. In the October 6th word, he said, yeah. and a core shall arise. A core is the smallest part right. of the apple. Right. So yeah. Yeah, there's just a few there's just a few that are speaking bravely. So we need to pray for Ted Cruz. Um you spoke about uh 
the uh, the Kentucky Derby. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about that. Okay, you want me to tell the antidote about how? I Anecdote. Yes. You said antidote. See, that's <laughs> how you know. That's how you know I like you. My love language is to correct people publicly. Yes. Anecdote. Yeah, absolutely. Anecdote. You'll never get that wrong again. And I have a big vocabulary, too. And it's like, you know, no, sometimes I know you it's do. just I, I no, lose the, the consonant in the middle of it. That's all right. Antidote. I'm here to help. Anecdote. Thank you. Thank you. Anecdote. <laughs> Anecdote. No, that's that's classic. That is so funny. Okay, so, so tell me, if you don't mind, that story. Tell my audience that story because this is honestly, this is crazy. It's important. I want them to hear it from you. So go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to tell the anecdote quickly why I picked up on this. Because my father, my father was in the Jewish foods business growing up, which we know from last interview, but he had a nighttime job and he worked at Yonkers Raceway. So my father probably taught a child everything you shouldn't teach a child. So he taught me how to understand trainers and, and racehorses and jockeys and their records and all the, you know what I mean? All these things. Your father worked at Yonkers at Raceway. Yep. That's with the, with the trotters, with the, with yes, the, with the trotters. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, when I'm driving up 287 or 87 North, yes. you pass Yonkers Raceway on you the right hand side. You see the trotters going around there. So your father worked there. Yep. And so he taught you about horses. Okay. What did you learn? He taught me about the importance of the trainer and who the jockey is, um, the name of the horse, their record, how often they race is important because if they're racing uh, more, they're more conditioned. Uh, They're in a better position to win because they're being kept up on their conditioning, things like that. And the Lord's probably going, how am I going to use this later on in life? Like, seriously, he's probably looking down from his throne, but he wastes nothing, the Lord. So... I have an eye for, and it only seems to happen in pivotal years because it happened with American Pharaoh too. Yes. The yes. same thing. Okay. To, to pick up on these things because of that upbringing. So sure enough, comes across my phone about Medina Spirit and the Kentucky Derby. So I perk up because I know it's the Triple Crown. You know, the Medina, previous. Medina Spirit won the Kentucky Derby. Under nefarious circumstances, and we'll get into that. And yes. I, 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 I've, uh, I'm, I interviewed Bob Baffert on my radio program mm-hmm. when, uh, what was it, three years ago, four years ago, they won uh, the Triple Crown Justified at, at Belmont because mm-hmm. I know the people who own Justified. And Bob Baffert is a, a legend, yeah, but he's been accused recently of doing something with Medina Spirit so that they are not really clear, did it win the Kentucky Derby? I still don't know where that stands today. Okay, so basically what happens is I I go, the Lord has me focus in on the name of this horse. Now, once again, we're in a pivotal year. We're in a tipping point year. And Medina, so the Lord has me go look up Medina. Medina is an Arabic word. Before you say that, when you say the Lord has me look up, what, what was going on? I'm always curious about the details. You're praying and God somehow nudges you in this yes, direction. Yes, he nudges me. Yep, he put he pushes me to look to look this up. That this is important. So I find out it's an Arabic word. There is a city in Saudi Arabia named Medina. It's one of the holier cities for Islam. You bet. Okay, so I go. There's something. Oh, but the plot thickens. I found out even more. So basically, I realize that the name of this horse is representative of the spirit and is connected to other things trying to take over this country. Because coincidentally, I'll give you a few background. Bill Gates has a, has a house in Medina, Washington. Okay, this is all connected. Um, Chuck Schumer was there apparently a few months ago trying to get people to get the shot in Medina. I'm not even kidding you. I'm not, you can look this up. I'm not even kidding you. And what else was it with Medina? There was, oh yes, the gentleman who owns Medina Spirit is um, Amir Zeldin. Of, and he established Zeldin Stables in 2016, the year Trump wins. Okay, hold on. Election. Folks, we're going full on crazy. <laughs> except I'm right there. Don't go away. Folks, I'm back talking to Amanda Grace. Amanda, even for people who are into the prophetic, yeah. listening to this, they're going, what? 
what are you talking about? It's oh, I'll get to my it point. Sounds, it sounds crazy. <laughs> no, 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 I know. But because I already know where you're going with this. But the, the, the issue is that you move in this stuff and you understand that there are times when, uh, I mean, look, we've already lost, you know, part of my audience, but I really feel that, that we need to, to understand that other people who are in the prophetic say the same type of thing, that they say that uh, certain names will pop up. Yes. Uh, and it happened with uh, with American Pharaoh a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned Medina Spirit. I mean, when you hear Medina Spirit, you go, Medina Spirit? Medina? It's like Mecca and Medina. Who names a horse? Okay, it's an Arabian stallion. I get it. But it's still interesting. Um, and you're saying that there is something deeper, that there's a parallel with the controversy around the horse. There's a parallel, and we'll, and we'll get into that. But this gentleman... He established a stable the year Trump was elected. He's married to a princess of Jordan who is embroiled in this Israeli, Israeli conflict right now. So, you know, we're connecting the dots here. So on the 10th is the first time I mentioned Medina Spirit, okay? The 10th of uh, May was the first time I talked about this horse. Last night was the second time. Now, the next day, I'm not even kidding you. We started getting videos, breaking news, May 11th and 12th. The city of Medina, Saudi Arabia, the skies are filled with thousands upon thousands of locusts. You're not making this up. I looked no. it up no. and I couldn't believe it myself. I mean, anytime you get a plague of locusts, that's going to be news. But when it happens specifically in Medina, mm -hmm. you're saying that God nudges you about the name Medina and the horse before yes. you get the news of the, the locusts uh, on Medina. So I did the first broadcast before the news, but it was the 10th. And some it, people, this sounds like 12. crazy conspiracy stuff, yeah. but I don't care. So keep going. Okay. So the, now what I found interesting was that this horse was not favored to win. Now, let's parallel this to the country and go back to November for a minute. Was this not, horse living in the basement during the campaign? Be honest. He, let me, he may have been doing podcasts from the basement, for all I know, for like, I don't know, retired racehorses. I don't right. know. But he was, you know, so he's not favored to win. He comes out of nowhere, this horse, and he wins the Kentucky Derby, and there's a little bit of shock about that. Okay, yes, we know. Uh, Mr. Bafferty is the trainer, but there's a little bit of shock about this. Well, in these type of races, they drug test the horse afterwards to make sure the horse has not been given any legal advantage of some sort of substance. So they drug test the horse and they find he's 11 picograms above the legal limit of a certain steroid, which would be an anti-inflammatory, which would the horse wouldn't feel as much pain and be able to run faster. If we, you know, follow the logic here, anti-inflammatories lessen pain. They allow you to do things you wouldn't do if you didn't take it. Yeah. And that's called cheating. So that's called going. cheating. Yeah. So the trainer is going, I have no clue how this happened. This is a gut punch. You know, we won fair and square, you know, the articles. Well, what did they do? They'd say, we have to launch an investigation. So this horse, this race, the way it's gone is like the way the race went in November. We have to look. So when they start digging, all of a sudden the trainer now comes clean. I'm going to read to you this headline because I saw this headline and my jaw dropped. Riding for a fall. This is the headline about the horse. Riding for a fall. Medina spirit trainer Bob Baffert admits to using ointment with steroid after Kentucky, Kentucky Derby horse test positive. So basically they said they were treating him for, I don't know, psoriasis or some sort of rash. And they used an ointment that had, I guess, a high concentration of steroid in it. And it got into his bloodstream and he comes clean only after the investigation starts and they start digging. So what happens in the Preakness now? Because this goes in suit. Medina Spirit um, is racing in the Preakness. They think he's going to win. And some, something I do know about jockeys is many of them will hold the horse back and hold the horse back and conserve the horse's energy. And at the last turn, they let the horse go into a full canter and just take off as fast as it can. 
So this horse, Rombauer, this jockey did this, and he's holding this horse back. And in the last turn, this horse, Rombauer, comes out of nowhere and literally snatches it away from this horse. Snatches it away. Wait, so Medina's spirit won? No. 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 Uh, he, at the last moment, Rombauer surpassed him. Got it. Okay, so it looked like Medina's spirit was going to okay. potentially take it, and Got then it. this horse comes out of probably from the outside because they like to do that out of nowhere and takes it. Okay. And snatches it away from him, but now they still have the investigation that's ongoing. And I'm thinking if this is not parallel to what happened in November and since, I don't know what is. Now explain that because I'm not sure that that's as clear as as you're saying. The, the parallel is that it looks like. In other words, are you are you you're suggesting <laughs> that Biden will not prevail? That's what it looks like from what I'm seeing because the horse was not favored to win the Kentucky Derby. Okay, right. who else do we know wasn't favored at that moment to win? Okay. For a nefarious means and cheating, this horse wins. And they go, something's not right. Right. We have to launch an investigation. This is going in the same sequence as what happened with the election. So you, you believe because of this and other things that Biden will not complete his term in office? I believe as well that Biden is holding hands. Uh, the reason why Medina spirit so important is involved with where that spirit comes from. He's involved with those countries uh, to try to destroy in a way this country in Israel. So he's involved with what we see trying to take over. I have never seen Medina so much in my life. Medina with Bill Gates, Medina spirit, the horse, Chuck Schumer was in Medina, Washington, you know, giving his spiel on, on the shot and why everybody should have it. That should scare you enough people and make you run the other way. Um, you know, so what, and I'm calling it the shot for a reason. I'm not using the V word, the jab, mm -hmm, the jab. And so, this and then in the process, Medina gets covered in locusts, which was one of the plagues of Egypt, completely just swarmed in the middle of this horse scandal, in the middle of the investigation in Arizona, in the middle of all of the Gates divorce. Medina is covered in locusts. This is how things work in the realm of the spirit. And they are connected. They you are connected. people could go crazy, though, because everything is connected, except you're talking about what God is telling you. This is not yes. just coincidences and craziness. You said that when you were praying, God gave you a picture of Chuck Schumer. Can you talk about that? Yes, his face like, like appeared so strongly before me in the forefront of my mind. And let's see here. Oh, I'll bring it up on the other document so I get it right because I have both of them up. And so... During these hearings, this is what this has to do with. Something's going to happen with this man in the middle of these hearings. And this is what I had written down from the Lord. Watch amidst the election reform hearings what comes of him, for the clock has struck 12 for many. And now I, the Lord thy God, shall judge the governmental leaders, players, puppets, and jesters. 12 is the number of government and rule, biblically speaking. So when he says the clock has struck 12, it is time for leadership to be judged. That's we're going to we're going to go to we're at the end of this break. Folks, uh, we're talking to Amanda Grace. You can find her online, YouTube channel, Amanda Grace Blogspot. Uh, we're continuing the conversation when we come back. Don't go away. Why would you? <laughs> Folks, we're talking about horse racing. I don't know why. Uh, Amanda Grace uh, is my guest. Chris, her husband, is yes. standing by. Hmm? Uh, I guess he's spotting you in case you go down, right? Exactly. You know, he's making his cameo. Oh, my gosh, Wally is coming over. Chris will grab Wally in a minute. The African gray parrot is literally trying to come over into the interview. Well, oh, my goodness. I think he came into my last interview. I think <laughs> that uh, this is the second time Wally the parrot has made a cameo. Yeah. 
Okay, so For American people, Pharaoh. Yeah, people, again, yeah. the horse racing thing, I know this sounds so wacky, and I, there's no way for us to really do it justice, but a number of people in the prophetic talked about the horse American yes. Pharaoh. By the way, it was spelled wrong. Pharaoh uh, mm -hmm. is A-O-H. They spelled it O-A-H, uh, which bothers me, but I don't care. Mm -hmm. We're talking about more important things. You said that, Somehow, was it you or was it somebody else that linked that horse to President Obama? Okay, so there's a few of us now. I was just putting words out on Facebook then. I believe Johnny Enlow, yes. prophetic voice Johnny Enlow was one of them who, you know, I, I like Johnny a lot. Mr. Yeah. Johnny, I call him. Uh, and so what happened was I remember seeing this. Now, remember... These seem to happen in pivotal years for the country. You go, well, why? Why is this so important? Now, I'm going to give you the short answer. In the realm of the spirit, there are principalities and territorial spirits that try to take over entire nations, cities, areas of countries. You could see it in the book of Daniel. There was an engagement between the Prince of Persia and Gabriel, the archangel, and he called for Michael in to move him out of the way so he could deliver a message to Daniel. They want to be glorified so bad when they're trying to move in, it seeps into every area of life. And you begin to see these things surface in different areas that don't look like they're connected, but they are. So American Pharaoh, I remember seeing him and I got on the phone with my godmother, Barbara, who mentored me in the prophetic. We call her my godmother. And we said at the same time, this is prophetic for this country because remember obama was ending his second term we were going to go into the 2016 race we said this is pointing at that obama wants to be the american pharaoh and he wants to go for the triple crown a third term using a puppet as a prop a person as a as a standing prop in him running it from behind the scenes in 2016 that would have been hillary clinton yes as far as I know from other interviews I've done on the show, she was seriously compromised through blackmail, through a bribe. And so that uh, Obama and others were able to believe that they would control her if she were elected. Mm -hmm. So this horse was pointing at it way before the election that he wanted to be the American pharaoh. He was going for a third term, a triple crown, by using somebody else as a prop, as a, as a stand-in, and he was going to run the country from behind right. the scenes, okay? And this was the tip-off for this, that he was going to attempt this, but he wasn't going to succeed. So even though American pharaoh had won the triple crown, the Lord was going to deny the one who really wanted to be the American Pharaoh, the triple crown. And so we agreed, we agreed on this. And then Mr. Johnny Enlow started talking about a lot of different things with American Pharaoh after that. And once again, pivotal year for the country. Once again, you see, you tend to see this in the pivotal years of the country. Now, what year did Justified win? I don't remember. Okay. Uh, because that name was it was either 2017 or 2018 i believe yeah yeah it was like in the middle of uh, maybe 2019 it could have been 2019 i don't know yeah well you know you tend to see these these names now keep in mind these names always seem to have to do with something territorial right okay american pharaoh medina spirit Okay, they were both owned by arabs i believe i believe american pharaoh was also owned Okay. Uh, by Arab people. And there's some wonderful Arab people around here, but some of them are involved in nefarious things. So it was interesting that they were both, it appears to be owned uh, by Arab uh, horse stables or breeders or right. owners. And once again, we're in a tipping point year this year. And here comes Medina Spirit. What are the odds that this horse appears in the year the gates are getting divorced 
who are embroiled in what's happening now. Well, who Medina, live in Medina, Washington. Washington, yeah. Yes. So what are the odds that in the locusts in Medina, Saudi Arabia, and in the middle of it is the conflict in Israel that Jordan is involved in, that this man is married to one of the princesses of Jordan who owns Medina Spirit. The odds of all of that happening within a short period of time. Right. It, it, it is it is so crazy. And so where do we think this is? Where do you think this is going? This is like, you know, it, the Lord, and I'm going to say this now because this is the same thing is happening now. For months leading up to the election, the Lord had me talking like a broken record. And I'd say the hallmark of a brilliant chess player is their ability to bait their opponent into making a move that they think is going to profit them. But when they make that move, it's a trap and it's checkmate. Right. And that the Lord was baiting the enemy right now. But to bait the enemy, you have to set a trap. And you have to make it look one way when it's not that way, it's another way. Uh, and that's what's happening right now because we have seen more be exposed and come out in the open about leadership who's entangled with other countries they shouldn't be, leadership in both parties who's doing it, software companies, voting machine companies. We have seen so much come out in the open uh, since November. It, it, the, it's, like, it's like a tsunami. It's like a tsunami of truth has hit the United States of America. Is this, uh, Albin, is this the eight? I think we've only got 30 seconds left in this one. I can't even remember. Maybe Albin will tell us. Uh, no, sorry. So it's the 11. Oh, it's the 11. Okay, good, good, good. Um, because I just want to follow up on this. So what you were saying uh, is that you believe that there are, you believe that these things are going to be exposed because again, we don't have, we can't get into every detail here. Yeah. And you talk about this, if people follow you on YouTube, but you really do believe that, um, that things are going to be exposed as we move ahead. Yes. It's the, the image the Lord gave me was, you know, when you see an iceberg, you see the tip of it sticking out of the water and it's deceiving because it looks like that's all there is to it but what you don't see is the deepest widest darkest parts of it that go into the depths of the ocean and what the lord is doing and i have found out that there is a phenomenon when the bottoms of the icebergs get too big and heavy they flip over and everything that was hidden now comes to the surface it's getting really big and heavy for those who are involved in this you know what i mean this is quite a house of cards. This is quite an iceberg that they have built, and their Titanic has reached impact. I, I really do wonder when this is all going to happen. I know that many people are getting impatient. It looks like the country's falling apart at light speed. It's being taken apart, uh, and that this administration is taking us into socialism. It's just a kind of a madness. I mean, it makes the days of Jimmy Carter look like the days of Reagan. I've never yeah. seen such... such uh, such speed. And I think a lot of Americans, even if they weren't pro-Trump, they realize that this isn't good. Whatever is happening, whether it's gas lines, oh, a yeah. pipeline being hacked, uh, a war in Israel. I mean, it really seems like something out of an end times novel. You can't believe that this is happening. And, and they specifically chose this time to hit Israel. They specifically chose this time because there's something trying to be revived right now, which was known as the Iran deal. So how convenient to go after Israel in the middle of it all now. That's not a coincidence that this is happening. In you other know, words, they, they know that the Biden administration is, is, is not, doesn't want to mess up the Iran deal so that they're going to be hands off on Israel. Which is a huge mistake in the eye because you have a bigger um, now power to contend with known as the Lion of Judah who is the defender of Israel, who is going to respond. Now, I remember he talked about he was going to shake these nations that came after Israel like they've never been shaken. So that's coming. That's so that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. It is so fascinating. And I know one of the reasons that uh, I'm so interested in your prophetic ministry, Amanda, is because you – you follow up. In other words, you don't just throw stuff out there, and if it doesn't happen, you don't say anything. You're trying to get it right. You're responsible, 
And that's so important because so many people in the prophetic, they just kind of say stuff and then they move on. And yeah. if it didn't get, you know, you, you, you want to say, wait a minute, what about what you said? This is too important, you know. Uh, we're going to go to break. Folks, we're going to be right back. I'm talking to Amanda Grace. Don't forget to go to my website, ericmetaxas.com. Sign up for the newsletter, please. It's important. Yes, it Thank is. You. Folks, I'm talking to Amanda Grace. Mm -hmm. Amanda, this is uh, you. You got a word. What is the word about the bug? T tell us the word. So God, and again, for people who are trying to track here, God speaks to you. You write down the word that God gives you, and then you go back later to say, what does this mean? So what was this word, and when did you get it? And this is a perfect lesson in we can't apply our finite minds to what God is saying sometimes because he means it totally different than we think. And so uh, this is going to be a, a lesson in itself. So on the 8th of April, the, I'm, I'm taking an excerpt from that word, 2021. The excerpt was, a worm is about to be pulled from its dark hole, which I think we're waiting for, and a bug shall be caught by the Pentagon. Okay. Now, on the about a month and a half later, on the 14th of May, 2021, here was the headline we were sent. Breaking exclusive uncovered a direct link between the Chinese military and a major Pentagon funded virus research center. What is the other, what is the other name for a virus? A bug. So this is a perfect lesson in how we may think it means you know, so like a bug, like they've bugged their, bugged their office to listen in on them. But this really may have to do with this virus research center because it's also known to us as a bug. And basically what happened was there are two um, individuals here, Tian Wang and Lin Sung, who were trained in the People's Republic of China that are leaders of something called the UTMB training program, supported by Fauci's NIAID, which is another program. And they said that the, Lin Sung is a member of the Pentagon-funded UTMB Center for Biodefense and Emerging Infectious Disease. So they have caught now a link now that people who were trained in China are now working in this biodefense and infectious disease center in the Pentagon. And they have now cover, uncovered a direct link between this. this. You realize most Americans, I think this is so dark, so nefarious, yeah. so horrifying. You really don't want to believe it. You don't want to believe that your government could be so far away from honesty, transparency, clarity, fidelity to the American founders, fidelity to the American people. It's so dark and horrifying that we do need a reckoning. I mean, it seems to me that it's just, it, it, it's just so hideous. The only good news is God wants to drain the swamp. So you really do believe, based on what God has said to you in the past, that the swamp will be drained, that these things will come to light. I don't remember the specific words that you've gotten, but what what makes you think that there will be some good coming out of this? Well, because first of all, in a, in a couple of recent words I've delivered from the Lord, the Lord uh, talked about uh, prophesy to these bones of the United States. He talked about the eagle um, being wounded, but he was he was healing those wounds to it was going to store again i'll tell you there's another one from march 27th i have right here that's also encouraging because this for march 27th is happening now okay so two months ago almost and this is what it says a roar out of israel says the lord confusion with the election that shall expose a web that circles through the palestinians that circles through the turks and back, says the Lord of hosts, and one I have anointed shall arise in the midst, and he shall be marked. He's talking about Israel here, but then he goes into us, says the Lord of hosts. An unusual event in Israel shall be a prophetic sign of what is set to occur in the nation of the eagle, says the Lord of hosts, for the eagle is about to spread its wings and catch an updraft. Yes, this nation shall mount up, and up is capitalized, with wings like eagles, and jump up in faith off of what appears to be a cliff 
and soar where the enemy cannot reach them, says the Lord of hosts. This was March 27th. Now, the events have already started, so it confirms the word because the first part about Israel has already started because it's happening now over there. Unbelievable. Praise the Lord. It is unbelievable so, stuff. Well, people have to go back uh, to your, I mean, if people are interested, they need to watch some of your videos and and really begin to understand where you're coming from because there's no way we could hope to do it uh, in this show. But it's just, I'm so fascinated. You're very careful, Amanda, about, about what you say. I want people to know that because I think that a lot of people just kind of spout off and I think we have to be careful did God yeah, say this? And, you know, and if you get it wrong, you say, well, I had that wrong. Or I had this wrong because there's so many people that want to know what is happening to this country right now. And God knows, and we have to take comfort in that. But it's good to know that that people in the prophetic like you see good things, because I think a lot of people are convinced, hey, we're in the end times. It's all going to hell. You're, you don't believe that. No, we're not quite, th you know, there may be end times, but we're, you know what I mean? It's not like we have some time left. And so the Lord wants the people of this nation to cry out to him because he has the ability to intervene. He does and change the entire trajectory. Let me tell you something. The Lord went up against the superpower of the world at the time, Pharaoh in Egypt, destroyed his army, destroyed his nation, took all the gold and silver, loaded it on Israel and left like a boss and led them across the Red Sea. Seriously, like yeah. this is what the Lord did. He faced the superpower of the world, and they were no match for him. It's, so it's, it's, <laughs> this is in terms I'm trying to explain to people that they can understand. It's, you know, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Alvin, I'm going to I'm gonna hold Amanda for another seven minutes because I, we have got a, two more things to talk about. Folks, okay. stick around. <laughs> Folks, final segment with Amanda Grace and her husband, Chris, sitting there like an Olympic spotter in case anything goes <laughs> wrong, you're going to be right there. Uh, okay. So Amanda, you, you sent me, if I was laughing myself sick, people who've only listened to this program don't know your, your backstory, which yeah. we did in my last interview with you, where you talk about all these animals, you have an animal sanctuary. You're in, in upstate yes. New York. You have an animal sanctuary. Mm -hmm. You have a pig called Noble. What yes. kind of a pig is this? And how did you get your hands on this beautiful pig? What, how did that happen? Yeah. Well, Noble is a Juliana pig, and, you know, the Lord trained David through sheep, and he just trained me through ducks and pigs and birds and all sorts of things. He trained me up. So Noble was orphaned. He'll be two years old in August, actually. So two years ago, it's so funny, my husband comes home after being in the hospital for like, you know, seven plus months at that point, and I spring on him that we have to take in this pig. So it was just perfect timing. What do you mean the pig was orphaned? Like, we hate to see it when a pig family is broken up. Uh, <laughs> but you're telling me, what, what, what happened? Did his parents die in a plane crash? How, did, how was Noble no. orphaned? Okay, so pigs have a very hard labor. Now I'm gonna give you some animal trivia. They have yeah, a very were, hard labor. I was labor. hoping that we would get to uh, <laughs> the, the issue of labor in the pig family. So, yes, so they have a very hard labor. labor. The giving birth, right? Yes. And so what happened was his siblings died at birth, everyone except him. And the mother died days after birth, and he was orphaned on this farm. So, um, the father, typical, nowhere to be found, right? <laughs> so what Unbelievable. Happened? These no. deadbeat dads. We don't know where the father, probably running around with some other floozy pig across the farm. Unbelievable. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so where did you, this is an exotic pig. Where did you find this beautiful pig? This, we had, had to go up to on? Chatham, New York, and it was kind of funny because when I first presented to, because this wonderful woman took him in and bottle fed him, and now she needed to find a sanctuary to place him. And the first, when I present this to him, the first thing he says is no. <laughs> No, because that's the first a word Chris learned in rehab, by the way, was no, which is good for any marriage, you know, that your husband knows the word no. So basically we go up to Chad and I go, come on, Chris, let's just go look. Maybe the Lord wants us to take in this pig. Well, God is so brilliant because he was like this big at the time. We get there. The pig runs right to Chris. The piglet runs right to Chris and he got on the ground and he went, OK. <laughs> It was over, and we took Noble home with us. 
And so, so Noble, how big is Noble now? How big is the big uh, <laughs> Noble's probably about a buck sixty now, <laughs> at least. Are you serious? He's got a low center of gravity, though, so he's not tall. He's just, you know what I mean? But he's a 160 super. pound pig, they start out looking cute. Now, it's a different kind of cute. <laughs> and and Noble is the mayor of Ark of Grace. So he walks around every day, does his duty, visits the animals, visits any new intakes we have. I had to do a rooster rescue last week and take in two roosters and rehome them. So that was last week was rooster rehab and rescue. <laughs> so you got a full-blown animal sanctuary. Now, yes. Noble, the reason I, I remember this is that you sent me a photograph of Noble the pig sleeping on a Mike Lindell my pillow pet <laughs> pillow yes I said I got to put that on the internet so people understand folks if you have a pig you're looking for some kind of a cushion you go to mypillow.com <laughs> use the code Eric and you'll get a beautiful my my yes. our little Georgie our eight pound doggy uh sleeps on a Mike Lindell pet pillow but even if you're if your pet is 160 pounds, Mike Lindell has a pet pillow for you. That's the main thing. I say if people could just remember one thing from all the conversations we've had. Just remember when you go to my pillow, use the code Eric. That's the only thing that I care about. But seriously, you have you have all these animals. So you've got a pig. What else do you have there? Because I mean, I hear these animals in the background. Let me tell you, God's got some sense of humor because every time Chris says no, another one shows up. I go, stop saying no, because the Lord's going to keep sending them. So we have an African gray parrot, a 39-year-old African gray parrot named Wally, who just came last month here to that was flown in from Minnesota. Right. Oh, Chris. Well, if you could get him out, Chris, go be my guest. Chris could try to get Wally out. And then we have in back of us, Chet the Cockatiel and Grace the Dove. We also have a peacock named Salvador. We whoa, have, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, a, peacock <laughs> a peacock named Salvador. Salvador. He's 18 years old. And so peacocks live a long time. 18 so we, year old peacock. That's the best eating size. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> oh, stop it. Stop. I'm just joking. I can't believe it. You have an 18 year old peacock. I'm actually amazed they live that long. That's they amazing. They can live up to 50 years in captivity. So they can actually, and they kill snakes and they go after all sorts of like, they're very territorial. So they'll defend your animals. We have Muscovy ducks too. If you've never seen a Muscovy duck, they're enormous. Go look them up. Um, so we have them also. And the Lord is just now we're making plans. We may potentially in September be taking in a baby male lamb. That needs to, <laughs> you know, I hate to break it to you, but they grow up to be sheep. Did you know that? I know that, but yeah. Noble's getting a new house outside and this lamb could be his roommate if this is what the Lord opens the door for. So I... we're making plans. Oh. oh, here he comes. Wait, he's got, Chris has got Wally. All right, Chris, come here. He's got Wally. This Wally the, loves Chris, by the way. Although the he loves me too, but he really loves Chris. This is the parrot. Where is he? Where? Oh, our there maiden. he is. There's Wally. And Wally can not only talk, he knows how to sound like a FedEx truck backing up in the office. You're not joking. So, I'm not joking. It, it, he does it during Grace and Glory. Dave almost falls off his chair because the bird sounds just like a FedEx truck backing Look up. Look at his tail. He's got a beautiful red tail. Yes. Beautiful. They live over 60 years in captivity. And okay. so he's dancing because he's all excited that Chris took him out. So he's doing his little dance right now. I've never had a parrot on the show. And can I tell you, <laughs> that was intentional. Okay. Until today. <laughs> Until today. God has softened my heart. Uh, look at that beautiful red tail. This yep. is why I tell people to go to my website, ericpataxis.com, and sign up for my newsletter so you can see these videos. Because yep. honestly, on radio you can't see a parrot. I don't care what kind of a radio you have, you're not gonna be able to see the parrot unless you watch this on video. This is just, we're, we're basically at a time, Amanda and Chris, this uh, is so entertaining to me. We're talking about everything and then we bring it home to these beautiful animals that you have. Suzanne and I wanna come and visit. And actually oh, please do. Yeah. I'm dying to see this pig. Noble. We're going to have to film you running around with Noble. Oh, don't everybody. worry. Yes. Don't worry. I'll, I'll film it. Well, I'll, I'm going to say goodbye, folks. What is your website, Emma Amanda? What is your website? Okay, our website is www.arc, with a K, of grace ministries.com and we're Ark of Grace Ministries on YouTube okay. as well. All right, people so, can find you. Yes. Chris, Amanda, and the beautiful parrot. God bless you. Thanks God for bless being you. my guest. <laughs>